80% of the chefs in the room chose. Hello, this is Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm your chef on a mission. Chefonamission.com or check me out at aromatimebistro.com, time like the herb, T-H-Y-M-E. The logo should be, right over here, the logo should be the Aromatime logo. Check it out, check us out, we're in the Hudson Valley. So, um, I'm a huge proponent of wild salmon versus farm salmon. I feel there's no place for, for the traditional farmed salmon, traditional farm salmon. I mean the open pen farm salmon that you find in the oceans and the bays that pollutes everything, spreads diseases, viruses, lice. And some of these farms say they're doing a better job now. They don't just, uh, administer antibiotics. Well, no, of course you don't administer antibiotics for lice. You, uh, you administer slice and other chemicals. So yeah, antibiotics might not be a thing a farm is, uh, salmon farm is putting in, but they are putting other things in and they are spreading disease, that's the bottom line. If you're interested in eating the best farm salmon, then you go to a company like Kutera, British Columbia, Native. Uh, the natives up there have an inland containment system. Uh, but let's go to how, uh, does, does wild salmon and farm salmon taste any different? Is there a difference in the taste? Some people say there's no difference in the taste. Well, let me share my personal experience with you. Now, here's a comment from one of my videos um, on salmon. I just love these stupid stories where people claim they can tell the difference between one good food and another bad one. I have personally done blind tests with friends to see if they can, uh, as they always say they can, tell the difference between brands of vodka, tin tuna, butter, olive oils. To date, none of them can tell the difference between expensive quality brands and cheap low quality. Of course they say they can, but remarkably, that only applies <laughs> when they know they're eating the goods or, or know, know when they're eating, when they, when, know what they are eating. Gosh. So, let's talk about salmon. Uh, 1999, the year 2000, I was at a conference at the Culinary Institute of America, Chefs Collaborative. There was 80, 100 chefs in the room. We did five blind tastes of salmon. They were on a paper plate. They were all numbered, five different pieces. So we have five options. It's not one or two. It's which, which is better, which is worse. There's five different salmons. There were farm salmons and wild salmons, fresh wild salmon and frozen wild salmon. All right. So we had the gamut of salmons. 80% of the chefs in the room chose the frozen at sea wild salmon. Now these are chefs folks, these are people that are trained uh, to, for flavor, these are people that cook food, these are people that, that design dishes and select ingredients based upon flavor. 80% of those chefs picked the wild frozen at sea salmon. Okay, not the fresh wild salmon, not the fresh farm salmon, but the wild salmon. It was a remarkable difference between texture and flavor. I, it, was, it was a mind opener for me, okay? So, with that being said, salmon is one of those things where, yeah, you can totally taste the difference. I can smell and be like, oh, what's, 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 this, what's this odor on this farm salmon? You can actually smell some of it. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty nasty. Um, beef, once beef cooks, we were at the same conference. I could smell, we could smell, some of us could smell smell the difference, and of course taste the difference in beef. Uh, the fat smells different in grain-fed beef versus grass-fed beef, or the presence of more of the fat absolutely smells different. A lot of times when you get a piece of steak and you smell it and it's all old in your refrigerator, you're like, oh, this steak's a little off. It's not the meat, it's the fat. If you trim that fat off, um, if you smell the fat versus smelling the meat, you'll smell the difference. It's the fat that smells the difference. So yeah, grass-fed versus grain-fed, you, you, can, you can smell the difference in that. When we used to serve Grey Goose vodka at the restaurant, we used to do blind tastings. People used to come in and say, you know, I want a Grey Goose. And we're like, well, don't you want Tito's? Don't you want something that's smaller, independent? Don't you want, you know, local vodka? And they're like, nope, I like Grey Goose. So we'd give, we'd give friends blind tastings, four or five samples. One of the people, regular customer, knew him before the restaurant as well. He says to me, he goes, Marcus, this is the Grey Goose. It doesn't taste as good as the other ones, but I still want Grey Goose. I still want to drink this because their minds are trained to, to recognize that name and to be part of the the culture of drinking or the allure of drinking one of the, how these brands market to you. He goes, I, he goes, I know the, the other ones taste better. He goes, I know that, but I'm a Grey Goose fan and I'm going to drink Grey Goose. 
I'm like, wow, that's such dedication. A brand to have that much power over somebody with their marketing to make them feel good, to know that, to know that, yeah, you happen to have the worst product in the lineup, but as a as as a fan, I'm still gonna support you when the other stuff is in front of me and I have an option to support something that's local, something that's independent, and something that tastes better. So yeah, so you can taste the difference, folks, on a lot of things. Now, olive oil is tricky because olive oil is adultered and they add flate, they add beta carotene to it, they add things to it to boost up the flavor profile. So you may never know on olive oil because like, they can be chemically altered, uh, drastically altered, where it's it's safflower oil, hazelnut oil, and some pumice olive oil with some coloring and some flavoring in it. Yeah, so you're tasting that. That's done in a scientific lab, folks. That's done where where you where, where it's designed to taste like something scientifically in a lab. But if you were to take pumice olive oil, which is the second pressing that's uh, extracted with hexane gas and then, then processed versus extra virgin olive oil, you can totally tell the difference. These are two olive oils, a cheap olive oil and a high quality extra virgin. If it's a real extra virgin olive oil and a pumice oil, there's no, you can just smell the difference. You can just see the difference because by nature, it's a totally different product coming from the same olive. So yes, that is totally different. Now he says canned tuna, tin tuna. Um, you know, the tuna that comes from the Pacific Northwest, the Polcott tuna, if you put Polcott tuna against something like, like Skipjack or something that comes out of, out of Asia, I know I could easily tell the difference. I know I could easily, easily tell the difference. If you're taking two different tunas from Asia that, that are sort of the same, or maybe they're, they're not sort of the same, I don't know if I could because I, I haven't, but you'd put two, two of those tunas in front of me, just by looking at it I can tell because the size is different. Pacific Northwest Pole Tuna are small tunas, 20, 25 pounders. Uh, those other tunas are netted and they're much larger tunas. So just opening the package or putting them on a plate, you can see the way it flakes and how different it is. So yeah, that, that's totally different. People, but I do know people that swear by the Polcott tuna. If you can buy canned tuna, Polcott tuna from the Pacific Northwest, I know people that swear by that and will not buy any other canned tuna whatsoever. Um, so yeah, so people can't tell the difference. This person's just saying that, I don't, I don't know I don't, I don't know who, where they're coming from or what they're doing, but they're obviously not that trained and educated on their palate. Um, or aware of of how to pull these foods out. If you look at salmon, folks, wild salmon versus farm salmon, you can tell the difference before you even taste it. There's a remarkable difference in color. One is done with a color wheel and they, they add food coloring to the food. The other one is done because it eats krill and has a wild natural diet and it has, you know, full of, of anise acetin. So that's the difference. So yes, I believe you can tell the difference between foods. Um, I'm a total fan of that and that's why as chefs, we always try to procure better, higher quality, better tasting foods because there is a difference. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.